Hello and welcome to Someone Should Have Told Me. Hey guys, it's been a minute since I have taped like almost a month, but I've been thinking of you guys and I want to say I love you guys so much. It is some things that I need to say, but first I want you to know I am saying I love everyone in the beginning of my podcast because I'm going to be talking some deep stuff. And I want you to know that I am not being judgmental because I have no heaven or hell to put anyone in, but I do have deep thoughts about this gender thing. Now, as far as I know, there are only two genders, which is male and female. You're born with the parts of one or the other. I want you guys to know that I don't care who you sleep with. I don't care not one bit. It has nothing to do with me and my life and everyone deserves to be happy and to live their life the way that they want to live their life. What I want to talk about though is having surgery to change your sex from female to male or male to female. For one thing, I think that that is a lot because as I talked about in my last podcast, I do believe in God and I do believe that everyone has a purpose and whatever you do, it is for a purpose. And so therefore, With that being said, let's dig in. As I said, don't care who you sleep with, but I think that it is tremendous to go under surgery to change your sex. Any surgery is extensive. I don't care whenever there is anesthesia involved, you are putting yourself at risk. You are putting yourself at risk of maybe not waking up. You are putting yourself at risk going under the knife because anything can happen. And is this so important to you that you have to change your private parts? Now, if you follow me on YouTube, you will see that my very first episode of Real Sisters Talking was interview with a lesbian couple. And in that show, I said, it is not up to us to decide who should be with who, who sleep with who, and everybody has to be themselves and live their life. It is not up to us to judge. But I came across a couple that was having a baby, and the person who was having a sex change, transgender person, to come from a female to be a male, was having a baby. And they had went through the process of mostly turning themselves into a male, which meant they had facial hair, And they looked like a male, but they were the one that was pregnant. And of course, all things are going on in my head. And I'm like, oh my goodness. So if you want to be a male, why would you be having the baby when you are with a female? What is the thought process behind this? And of course... As I said, I am not being judgmental because who am I to judge 
on someone else's life. I don't know what these people have been through. I don't know what caused them to do the things that they do. I just have to respect them as human beings. Of course, when you talk to your friends, you talk straight up with no punches held back. You want to know what your friends think? And this is a subject. We're going to talk about this. So I was saying, why would, why would a person who's trying to be a man get pregnant to have a baby while they're looking like a man? And of course, they've came up with a name for it, and it's called seahorse. That means that the seahorse in the ocean, the male has the baby. That's the way nature is. That's the way things are. So they decided to call this seahorse. So in the process, I talked to people that was around and I'm like, oh my goodness, this is like, so I don't know about, you know, them even being parents because they are really confused. But That was me prejudging from not even knowing any information. And when I say prejudging, it doesn't mean I'm holding anything against them. It just means those are the thoughts in my head. And I am a human being. And so therefore, we are not perfect. I'm saying, oh my goodness, why would they do that? And then it was like they were upset with people and they if they called the pregnant person, uh, her, but that is what they're used to dealing with in the hospital. A her having a baby, a her with a uterus, a him doesn't have a uterus. So a him couldn't have a baby, a her. They were upset. If you addressed the pregnant person as a her. So the best thing if you were having difficult with this, is to call the person by their name. Okay, you have people taking care of these people. And no matter what, people deserve respect. No matter what they're doing, how you feel about what they're doing, you have to respect the person. Okay, it was getting a procedure done and they kept calling the pregnant person a her. And they were getting upset, but apparently it was explained to me that they weren't getting upset because the person kept doing it. It was the way they kept doing it. They kept calling the pregnant person a her. And then when they say, no, I would like to be addressed as he or him. And then there was like, oh, well, and laughed and brushed it off. That is disrespectful. I do not agree with that. And as I said, if you can't bring yourself to call the pregnant person a him, then call the person by their name. Can't go wrong with that. Okay. Because they felt disrespected, then they brought administration in to discuss it. Everybody should be respected, as I said. Then it went around, oh my goodness, they get so upset when you call the patient a her. And so it is outside the door, please, when you come in, please address the patient as him or he. I was like, oh my goodness, what is going on in the world? I don't understand. I end up talking to an individual who had took care of them. And they were so sympathetic with the patient and they were so understanding. Mind you, this is my friend who says that she doesn't believe in God, okay? But she was more sympathetic with this couple than people that say that they believe in God. We're talking and we're laughing and I'm saying, I don't understand. So she explains to me, well, the female in the relationship, the one that is not getting the sex change, had tried and tried and tried to have a baby. 
and kept having miscarriages one after another. And so we laughed because in my interpretation, I'm like, well, maybe God didn't want them to have no baby. And <laughs> this is why they're going through that because I am, I am a believer that things happen for a reason. Un wanting to get pregnant in the midst of being trans from a female to a male decides to go ahead and get pregnant and have this baby for their relationship so that they can have children. And then another person that I was talking to in the group said, and they're probably going to be better parents than anyone, any drug dealer, any or person that takes drugs while they're pregnant, they're probably going to be great parents. And I said, okay, I can understand that. I can see that because they want a baby. They're two loving people. So then I came to the conclusion that this person having this sex change must love this other person so much that they would do anything for this person that they love. Because even though she's a female, she is willing to change her gender for the love of this woman that she is in love with. Because I know, as I said, my interview with a lesbian couple on my YouTube channel, Neither one of them are trying to change their gender into the opposite. They just love each other and they accept each other for who they are. But I do know that if they thought that the other one still wanted the opposite sex, that they would try to do whatever they can to appease this one. And I know this firsthand. I know this because they try little contraptions and then it was like, no, I don't want that. I want you as you are. And then I know a male couple. They're not trying to change their gender to be someone else because they want who they want. They want the male and to be together as males. They don't even like women that much. <laughs> they actually refer to them as, and I know some people might think this is derogatory, but it's all in their language. And really, they don't try to offend anyone, but they might refer to a woman as a fish, <laughs> which, oh my goodness, I'm just laughing because it's funny and not because... I agree with it because, oh my goodness, but that's their humor between themselves. I'm not judgmental of that either. The thing is, after talking, my friend, like I said, who didn't believe in God, she says, Norlinda, can you imagine being in a body that you don't want to be in? If they feel like a male, then that's the way God made them. And then I said, oh no, God did not make them want to be and change their gender because if that's how he wanted them, that's how he would have made them. They are doing some extra stuff that has nothing to do with God. It's what they want to do and it's what they feel that they should do. Now, I am not saying that they cannot love God. I am not saying that they cannot in the end make it to the kingdom of heaven because I have no idea what their life consists of. I have no idea what they've been through. And I know, especially after I've been watching The Chosen, have you guys seen The Chosen? The Chosen, the first season is on Netflix. And then there is the Angel Network, which... You can download on your phone or if you got a Roku TV and you can download apps on the TV, you can download the Angel Network as well. Now, The Chosen is telling the story of Jesus when he started to 
get his disciples. It is so interesting and powerful. And I thank the young lady who told me about it. It was someone who was a quiet person who don't talk to a lot of people. And she came and told me about The Chosen and I started watching it. And it is amazing. It is amazing, especially if you believe and love God and Jesus. So Jesus is picking his disciples and he's having supper with some people. Now, he did not pick perfect perfect people to be his disciples, to walk with him. I mean, they were something else. They were ready to fight and they were and he had to stop them, but then they were having dinner. Let me go back to that. They were having dinner and these Roman soldiers came to the door and they was like, if you are the Messiah, why are you sitting with these people? Why are you having, oh my goodness, that woman right there, I can't even speak on the things that she's done. We, oh my God, my tongue can't even say it. And then Jesus said, I did not come for the people that love me. I came for the sinners or the people that don't love me or the people that don't know me so that I can show them the way. It was awesome. It was so awesome. And it made me understand even more. We are not here to judge. Who do you think you are to judge anyone else? Anyone else. But I do not believe in surgery for vanity because if you're going to have surgery to lose weight, the belly band or whatever, I feel that we should be able to be strong and do what we need to do. And if you got problems with your willpower and you can't handle it on your own, then there is things that can help you. You know, I love to eat and I just bought this sauna that seems to be helping me as far as detoxing with impurities in my body and hopefully it makes me lose a couple of inches or a couple of pounds, I'll be happy. But I do not believe in surgery for vanity or surgery for things that is is not going to kill you, then we should be dealing with it without the help of surgery. I am just that person. It was a TikTok video that someone sent me. The girl was saying, if I am supposed to accept a boy that was born a boy and then changes themselves into a girl, If I am supposed to accept that, then why can't I change my race? If I feel inside, which it's pretty funny though. (laughs) If I feel inside that I don't want to be the race that I am, it's the same concept. It's the same thought. I cannot change my race. How can I change my gender? You know, let's use Michael Jackson. For instance, my children does not even remember him being black. They always thought that Michael Jackson was white because of, for whatever reason, whether it was a disease that he has or whatever reason, but Michael Jackson was a little black boy. And then when he grew up, he was a white man. At least that's the way it looked. I guess with money, you can do whatever, whether it's the disease or not. In my experience of the disease, it doesn't turn your whole body. It just gives you spot of lightness from the dark skin. I don't know for sure. I'm just saying what's the obvious and what we've seen and how we looked at things. I was like, Michael Jackson was black. And my son was like, no, he not. He's a white man. And I'm like, oh my goodness. I had to pull up an album cover from the Jackson 5 
and show him what he used to look like when he was little. Hey, I guess if you can change your gender, you can change your race. Even though we all know that whatever you do to change yourself, you're still the same person in the inside. If you have the change to become a man and you were born a woman, you still have female parts in the inside. No matter what happens on the outside, did they take your uterus out and give you a hysterectomy? I don't know because if you are born a man and turn into a female, you cannot have a baby. So therefore, you're still the same person in the inside. You just look different on the outside. And so then it makes it kind of awkward for those around you. But who cares? Long as you're happy with yourself, then it doesn't matter. And you know, I'm always saying it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. Be happy within yourself. The people that I know that are gay and lesbian, they still love God. The people that I know, because no matter who you are, no matter who you try to be, no matter who you change to be, no matter what, God is still over the world. And he has given free choice. So the free choice is if you want to have surgery to change your sexual orientation, then that's on you. Nobody should judge you because it's hard enough living this life, doing the things that you feel you need to do without all the judgment of everyone else. So therefore, I do understand that somebody snickering and laughing and calling this person a she when he is definitely trying to be a he is disrespectful. Now, what you do in the privacy of your home or the privacy of your car or the conversations you have with your friends, that's your own business. But to laugh and giggle in the face of this is childish and disrespectful. So therefore, I do not agree with making anyone feel disrespected, no matter what. My take on this is this person loved this person so much that they would do anything for this person. And it shows because they are changing their sexual orientation because they love them. And maybe they seen that they still wanted a man. So they would do anything for this person so that they can have what they needed because they love this person so much. To decide to have a baby in the midst of this, that only shows love. And I know that wherever there is love, there is God because God is love. And so therefore, I don't know. I can't say what's going to happen to these people. I can't say that their situation is not happening to show the rest of us a few things. Show the rest of us a few things about ourselves. The thing that I have learned with watching The Chosen is a lot of things depend on your faith, your mind, and your heart. What is in your heart? Your heart is what reveals your true self. So this person could be doing this thing with all this love in their heart for this person and they could be forgiven. When the world ends and we're caught up and everybody knows that story. I mean, they even talked about it on The Simpsons when they <laughs> caught up everybody in the rapture. People were left. I mean, they had an episode of The Simpsons like that. So People know that story, whether they believe it or they don't, but we cannot judge. And just like I said, if you can accept somebody feeling that they should be another race because you can accept somebody that feels like they should be another sex. The thing that I am trying to get across to you is 
Everybody has their own journey. Everybody is here for a purpose. Everybody is living their own true self. And so you don't have a right to judge. I don't have a right to judge. You just worry about you and how you live it and treat everybody with respect. I don't need to change my color because guess what? I keep telling you guys, I don't see color unless you make me see color because we are all running this human race, trying to get to the best place that we can be, trying to live the most fullest life that we can live. And if you are worried about your journey, then you don't have time to worry about anyone else's journey because my journey is taking me every minute, every second that I am living. And any time that I take away from that, it's slowing me down, holding me back. Life is short, people. You better use your time for you. You better use your time to do what you need to do and to worry about your inner circle, your people. Stop being judgmental. Love everyone. Love the people around you. Love your enemies. Love, love, love. And faith will get you through. And love and hope is right there with it all. Make your heart the purest heart that you can be because that is who's going to make it in the end the pure of heart. Be respectful of others at all times. Do not try to pose your opinion on them or pose the way you think that they should live. It is none of your business. All you need to do is stay in your lane and live your life to the best of your ability. As always, I love each and every one of you. I hope that you have a good life until I talk to you again. If you want to email me, you can email me at sshtmpodcast at gmail.com. Email me. Tell me what you think because all I want is for everyone to be secure in living their life. You know, life is hard as it is. We don't need anybody in our lives trying to judge us. Like you don't need anybody in your life trying to judge you. So email me. You can listen to me at Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, on YouTube, Norlinda Murray, N-O-R-L-Y-N-D-A-M-U-R-R-Y, Spotify, Pandora, Tell Alexis to play Norlinda Murray. Tell Alexis to play Someone Should Have Told Me podcast. She'll play it for you, and we will talk again soon. Have a great, great time until I talk to you again. Bye.